Hello. We all know that walls, cyclopean or not, are built from the bottom up. Thus, whatever is at the bottom is forcibly older than what is on top. If this seems obvious enough, it's much easier to disagree on how much older. Just days, years, centuries? The answer for cyclopean haters is always the shortest time impossible. Something like this. If there's a plastic bottle dropped on top of the floor, then the place was built in the 1970s. On the other hand, if we pay attention to details, such as the differences in style of construction, the building alignments, common sense and other little things easy to miss, we might end up with a broader timeline. In this new sequence of videos, we will go to some cyclopean walls in Greece and see how the signs on the ground are telling us an older story starting at the top, with the most impressive cyclopean wall of all Greece, the Emancipation Wall in Delphi. This wall is special, for many reasons. For one, the finishing and the elegance makes up for a unique look. There are no other walls in Europe with similar curved fitting. Around Greece, and even inside the Delphi complex, the main style for cyclopean walls is more trapezoidal, with straighter lines. Another thing that makes it unique is the writings on the wall. The scribblings, uncommon in cyclopean walls. They are interested in their own right. This wall is called Emancipation because of the messages left here by freed slaves. Each text represents a slave that was brought to Delphi and set free. It was a nice thing for the slave to be freed in Delphi, but we should refrain from reading it with our present-day eyes. The freed slave would end up bonded at the service of the temple. Surely something to celebrate, otherwise they wouldn't write it down, but still not as quite as civilized as we'd hoped for. This unique wall is bang in the core of Delphi, the navel of the world, center of the universe, where Apollo would convey his visions of the future to an eager crowd of kings and generals. There are dozens of myths about Delphi. Zeus had two eagles fly outwards until they met here, finding the center of the world. Apollo fought here a huge snake or a disgruntled mother-in-law. The temple had a stone telephone called Omphalos to talk to the gods. The future predictions offered by the oracle were barely understandable, given in an ambiguous babble by the Pythia, a young virgin that would inhale happy fumes. But today we'll stick to the physical evidence. All that magical stuff happened inside one temple, the Temple of Apollo, the most sacred place of all antiquity, a building that stood there in one form or another for thousands of years. What we can see today are the remnants of the 5th and the 6th temple, built in the 6th century BC, on the location of another previous four temples. The first three are too fabled to be taken literally. They are described as much as actual buildings as the houses of the three little piglets in the children's tale. Not joking, one temple was made of laurel branches, another of bee wax and feathers, and a third of bronze. Naturally, the big bad wolf time managed to blow these three temples to the ground, and people were left future guessing within the fourth temple, wisely made of stone. 
that existed here in that spot for centuries untold, meaning from before the Greek Dark Ages, deep in the second millennia BC. Reaching 548 BC, the by then probably a thousand years old Fourth Temple of Apollo burned to ashes, and the virtue signaling citizens of Athens came forward and paid for a fifth temple, of which we can still see the columns. Assuming that method of deducing a pavement is from the 1970s because of a plastic bottle laying on it, the Emancipation Wall is then said to be also from the 6th century BC, just like the temple above it. When it's not, it's older, and there are a few signs of age, wrinkles to consider. As we've seen, the freed slaves would write their release prayers on that wall, and nowhere else around it. If the wall was an integral part of the overall temple, why right there alone and not in any other part of the complex? Choosing just this wall to scribble meant that it was, if not more important, at least different from all the other 6th century buildings on end site. That first wrinkle is circumstantial, as is this next one. The style of the Emancipation Wall, as mentioned, is unique. Curved fitting is non-existing anywhere else in the continent. Even in Delphi, all the other polygonal masonry in that site is of a different style. More trapezoidal, with straight lines, except for the Emancipation Wall, and a tiny bit of another wall lost under a bridge nearby. The relevance of that hidden stretch of wall is that it's homeless. There is no house on top, no construction over it, no little temple built by a piglet or not, being supported by this lost bit of wall. So why is there a remnant of exquisite curved fitted masonry so similar to the emancipation wall out there, without any 5th century building around it? Yet another wrinkle. The Emancipation Wall is said to have been built at the same time of the 5th Temple of Apollo. But if they were built at the same time and for the same purpose, why is the temple base raised higher than the wall? The Emancipation Wall ends up on a lower level than the temple it is said to have been built for. It's nonsense. In the Delphi Museum next door, there is a model of the whole complex. And it clearly shows two different walls, the emancipation wall in the lower level and another taller wall on top to make up for the difference in height of the temple. Two walls means two building dates and the bottom one is older. And there's more. The wall is pointing on a different direction. That's it, the final wrinkle, the final hint that the Emancipation Wall is older than what is said by the experts, is that the Temple of Apollo on top of it is not pointing in the same direction as the wall itself. They are misaligned. The Temple of Apollo is parallel to a brick wall on its back and to the theater behind it all buildings from the same era and alignment, but slightly skewed versus the Emancipation Wall. I don't know how to make this last point clear, but let's try. Not only the wall and the temple are misaligned, the wall in itself is in a direction that topographically does not make it easier to build. One could say the wall was skewed versus the temple to better fit the terrain, but it's quite the opposite. The inverse skew would be a better fit for the slope. And that's weird, at least. Let's go elsewhere and consider these non-cyclopean examples from around Greece. The Temple of Aphaia sits on a custom-made platform that is aligned to the temple itself.
The same goes for the Temple of Poseidon. That's expectable. When building a fancy temple on top of a custom-made platform, both at the same time, you'd expect them to be pointing in the same direction. But no, the Emancipation Wall is looking the other way. Why? It seems to me it's because it's not from the same era as the Fifth Temple. It's older. Probably much older. From the same age as the Fourth Temple, that stood there for a long time before. So old we have no idea how old it was. Being fair to say, it's many centuries older, from before the Greek Dark Ages. That's it. And if you wonder, the reason why experts ignore these aging signs on the wall is because they need harder evidence, like lab tests or digging proofs. Let me tell you, it does not make a difference to them, as we'll see in the next chronologically challenged wall. Please leave a like and I'll see you soon.